Hey, welcome back to Evil's Comics. I'm Evil Mike, and I got a review for you from DC Comics. This is Tim Drake, Robin, issue number one. Um, it's written by McGann Fitzmartin, uh, art by Riley Rosmo, colors by Lee Lugridge, and colors by Tom Napolino. Um, it was a really good uh, issue. The only thing I can say was really, really quick. Um, what you got, it wasn't like very short it was just action-packed kind of I can say well let's just get into it um, we are following uh, Tim Drake the third Robin um, he has recently left Bruce Wayne's you know kind of like a compound I don't he's not at the mansion but he's he's at this other I don't know what it's called but it's like a um, like high rise and near downtown kind of so I don't know what they're exactly calling it let's just call it manor for now but Tim Drake has went separate he has moved to the Gotham, Gotham City uh, Marina he's living on a houseboat it's supposed to be like the ugliest houseboat there he's walking home one night it's like I think the first night he's moved in and he feels like somebody's watching him and sure enough it's his boyfriend Bernard um, <clears throat> Bernard happens to like creep up behind him. He even makes like a statement like, I can't believe you let me, you know, creep up behind him. But Tim Drake's kind of like, he, he still feels like somebody else is watching him. He even makes a statement that he could smell Bernard before he got there. They eventually do go on a date night that's on this page over here. Uh, on their date night, they're end up greeting by like some of the new neighbors that are there. But, and I'm going to butcher this name. Um, but it is the Espanyang family, um, but it is a mom and a daughter, a mom and a daughter, and I think we only get one of their names, like Cam, and I don't think we got the other, the other lady's name, but they're handing out these flyers for, like, um, some kind of petition that's going on at the marina. There's, like, a business that's coming through, and it's buying up other houses and businesses and forcing people to move out, and they've got this petition you know to go against that of course Tim Drake and uh, Bernard are both for it um, kind of like the underdog kind of thing they they eventually the, the the mom and daughter eventually you know go on their way and Tim and Bernard continue their date and eventually you know um, Tim eventually goes home there is a little discussion you know as far as Tim um, this is all new for Tim I think it's been like six months with him and Bernard um, they're not exactly classified as anything yet, so there's conversation about, like, what does he classify Bernard as? Is it a boyfriend at this point, or is it still a partner, or, um, there's a little bit of that there. They do show, like, the, the marina and some of the good parts, some of the bad parts, like, you know, angry junkyard dogs and nice partiers. Um, after going home, he's greeted by another character. This is, um... It's Darcy, who is a.k.a. Um, Sparrow, one of the Bat Family members. Um, she's, she's basically from the, like, Robin Initiative. Um, but you find out that Tim Drake eventually invited her to his boathouse since he had just moved in. Um, we find out that they've been really close ever since the Robin Initiative and and more so like than any of the other, you know, candidates that were in the program with Tim Drake. Um, so we find out Darcy and Tim Drake are kind of like best friends kind of thing. Um, and they're eventually just chilling. He's kind of showing her the, that's what the spread is of the boathouse. They're kind of like walking through the boathouse. They show you like the innards of it, you know. Um, they do mention like over here like a bad suit and, I mean a robin suit and he does mention that a new suit is coming as they're like walking through and checking you know he's showing off the house and this and that they do hear a scream from outside and when they go outside they do find out that that couple that they were greeted you know that he was greeted with earlier the Espina family I don't know I know I'm killing that name um, but they're both dead and you can even see one of them's here like is decapitated because her head's over here and her body's over here um, and uh, honestly this is where the book really got good because this is where Tim Drake kind of in my opinion 
excels versus the other Robins. He's a natural like Sherlock Holmes. They, they compare a lot to him, especially in this book they do. Um, and not, not in any, like an egotistic way, it's just the comparison of how he detects versus the other Robins and Batman included. But <clears throat> already he is looking at the scene. He ends up calling Detective Williams like a GPCD officer that he can trust. Um, Detective Williams is kind of hesitant, especially when working with anybody in the Bat family. Um, I don't know where this fits in, so I don't know the strife that's going on between GCPD and the Bat family, but who knows, it could be anything. Um, but eventually Tim Drake just tells him that, hey, you know, I called you on this investigation, the cops didn't know about it, you know, like, hey, you want to help me, you know, do the right thing and let's solve this crime kind of thing. Um, at that point, you know, Detective Williams gets online hesitantly I'll, I'll add but um tim drake kind of goes to work and we get to see some of his like sherlock holmesness and within like i wouldn't say he solves the crime but he's kind of already got the basis of it down um and it it reminds him of another case it's something that involved like a young justice um tie-in but not specifically to this just something that happened before but yeah, he tells a story about how, like, in the past, they, they came across, um, I think it was Superboy, Impulse, and him. They came across a, like, this mystery, and it was tied to a book. I think it was, like, Edgar Rice Burroughs or Edgar Allan Poe, one of them. You know, but it was, it was tied to a certain murder mystery story, and somebody had taken an animal from that murder mystery story and somehow made a hologram out of that animal. And... But it wasn't like a, like a uh, see-through hologram. It was a physical, like manifestation hologram. And he kind of states that once they found that animal, that the only way they could get do anything to it, because they couldn't attack it, they couldn't harm it, they couldn't stop it from doing what it was doing. But he does mention that eventually they had to like reenact the end of the story and and. By them getting to the end of the story, the animal just kind of dispersed and disappeared. Um, as soon as like he tells the story, and he's kind of already noticed that one that there's like a a piece of orangutan hair on the murder scene. Um, and after telling the story, as soon as he does this, this like kind of silver, like ghostly, you know, orangutan pops out of nowhere and starts attacking Detective Williams specifically first, and then Sparrow and. And um, Robin, Robin kind of like, you know, Tim Drake kind of like jutes out and he's trying to like figure out, you know, what's going on and how to stop it while this is all going on. You know, and Sparrow and Detective Williams are trying to survive and, you know, deal with this thing and they're quickly finding out that the, nothing is really, you know, working on this, this animal and Tim Drake's kind of going back to his story. And in the story, there was like this disc that was near the scene that created it. And the other story was an elephant. And to get rid of the elephant, they noticed that like that there was this disc that was near it. Eventually, like Superboy broke the disc in half. So they kind of tell Robin to do the same thing. They they find out that there's more than one disc, as you see over here. He's breaking one, and they're breaking some down here. Um, but it doesn't necessarily stop the orangutan from, you know, it didn't do the same thing that it did before. So Robin kind of goes back to his like, you know, how did they stop it before they broke the disc kind of thing. And it was the whole reenacting, and you know, the whole written book, you know, part of it. Um, and basically in this version, this orangutan is trying to get a straight razor that was found at the murder scene and Tim Drake actually figures out that by giving him the straight razor which he does somewhere over here it's over here it's hard to see because it's all white but um he gives and it turns out the orangutan's name is George I think but he ends up giving George the the straight razor and and the purpose of it is because the orangutan was attacking everybody because they they were calling him a monster and an ape and that George felt like he was more of a man giving him the straight razor you know it, it helped him feel more like a man um, and basically that that's it that the orangutan fizzles out you know 
they go back to trying to figure out who did all this, but that that's it at the end of the nine. They go the next day, and it's got, you know, Darcy is back over with Tim, Dra T Tim Drake. She did not spend the night, and she ends up showing back up. Um, they're just best friends like that. But <clears throat> they're, they're like, cleaning his boat and stuff like that. But as they're, they're cleaning his boat, um, he is talking about the, you know, the, the, the mystery from the night before. Who could have done it? Why did they do it kind of thing? And why... The why all of a sudden with the two similarities in the cases even though they were like maybe years apart or something like that but as soon as he like you know kind of gets all this out in thought you know we a package arrives at his boathouse and it basically just says like you know clever work today until next time gumshoe and tim drake it really kind of like it, it you know it kind of gets him back into the whole sherlock holmes thing but that is where this book ends um Honestly, I love that. I love that that Riley Rossmo did the art. I love his art. I know people might not be a hundred percent on his art, but I do love his art. You know, he he was uh, the beginning of this new Harley run. He was doing the art, um, but with Harley's comic, he it was a lot more comedic. And this one, it's very serious, and it was kind of nice to see the difference in the art. But um, as far as that, I mean, it was a great first issue. I love that we got into the detective side of it very quickly. It's it's part of my, like, it's my favorite thing about Tim Drake. Um, so hoping there's more to this murder mystery and the fact that it's kind of like a Sherlock Holmes, old book style kind of murder mystery thing. I kind of like all that, you know. Um, but hey, that's my review. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below, you know, did you read this? Did you pass it? You know, why did you pass it? You know, what did you think about it if you read it? You know, let this guy know. Um, I have some more reviews coming. I'm a little, I'm running a little late, but I'm getting them out. Um, I will see y'all folks later. Ah!